Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to develop a text to image generation gradio application. Uh, and we will use a diffusion model uh, named SHT1B, which is the short form for uh, SegMind Stable Diffusion, which is a new uh, like an stable diffusion model, which is 50% smaller than the uh, stable diffusion Excel model, the base Excel model, and 60% faster when it comes to generating images of the same quality or a similar quality at at least the equivalent uh, quality of images. And that's what we're going to look at in this video today. And we'll, we'll see that how we can inference it on a single GPU, maybe using Google Colab. And then we'll also uh, build a simple Gradio application. We'll talk about uh, the negative prompting and the prompt and a couple of other things that how it has been trained and what the difference between SSD 1B and the stable diffusion Excel model. Now, if you look at over here, I am currently on the Hugging Face repository of SegMind, which is which says SSD 1B, and which is, as I said, like 50% smaller and 60% faster than the uh, base model. And it really looks promising. Uh, when I first tried it, it's really fast. Takes around 15 to 20 seconds on the second run, not the first run, of course, uh, wherever you are using it. So it takes around 15 to 20 seconds to generate the images, sometimes even 5 to 10 seconds. And on a GPU machine, a single T4 or a A100 or whatever that you are using. So I, I, we're going to use T4. If you look at over here, let me just at least connect here. Okay, so I'm just going to call it SHD1B. We'll first inference to try to generate some images and we'll see uh, how fast it generates. Now. If you look at over here, it says 50% smaller, 60% speed up while maintaining high quality, you know, text to image generation capabilities. Uh, it has been trained on really diverse data sets. If you look at the research paper, uh, including grid and mid journey scrap data as well. And that's why it generates some good quality images. Uh, if you look at over here, the example that they have given a more realistic images when you compare this with stable diffusion Excel. Okay, now it's it's very easier when it comes to deploying this on a single GPU on the hyperscalers like AWS, uh, Vertex AI or Azure Machine Learning or wherever you are using SageMaker, for example. Now, uh, they have given again the transformer pipeline, uh, the stable diffusion pipeline, you can use it. But this is what it's uh, this is what it shows here, guys, the model architecture. You can look at the number of parameter. It has 1.3 billion parameter. That's why it's 50% of the base HD Excel. And it has been trained on uh, around 250,000 steps with a batch size of 32 and then uh, mixed precision. So you can look at here the half precision, which is floating point 16. This has been used as the mixed precision here. And if you are not aware about uh, what is for, like FV16, it is again like a one sign bit, five bit for uh, exponent and 10 bit for the uh, for the fraction. It, it's really helpful. It's uh, really an amazing uh, structure when it comes to compress the models. Okay, that's that's where it helps. Now let's start writing the code and see how we can inference it. So let me first do a uh, runtime go and you have to go here on change runtime type. If you are using Colab, I'm going to select. Let's select maybe T4 okay, uh, and save. Now I'm connecting with T4, uh, Tesla T4 GPU, which is uh, by Colab. And uh, uh, let's, you can probably use the, I have the paid version of Colab, but it will definitely work, work on the free version as well. Now let me open Diffuser. Ooh, Diffusers, uh, Hugging Face, Diffusers. Hugging Face Diffuser. I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to install this from here. Okay, so let me just copy it. Uh, and let me just install. So I'm just going to install it from GitHub source. So let me just do pip install. And then git plus this will completely be uh, removed the git part at least. And then also let's install other libraries that we need. We need transformers. So let me just do pip install. Uh, transformers accelerate we need accelerate i 
I wrote it wrong. Accelerate, and then we need safe tensors because we're going to download the model weights. Okay, at least in this uh, cache runtime. Now transformers, accelerate, and uh, safe tensors. Now let's try installing this. And you can see it starts installing, and we'll uh, we'll write the next step. Now it will install, and let's let's start importing this guys. The first thing that we're going to do is from diffusers. We need the pipeline from Excel, so we need stable, stable diffusion, and then the Excel pipeline. I should have done hyphen Q to just minimize that verbose. Okay, from diffusers, stable diffusion Excel pipeline. We need torch. So let's do torch, and we also need uh, from transformers the dot pipelines dot image to text so let's use image to text import img we're gonna use that image and we also need display so let's get it from ipython so from i ipython dot display import display okay now we have imported successfully now what we gonna do is we're gonna create a pipeline variable so let's create a pipeline so pipe and we're gonna use stable diffusion uh excel pipeline two and inside this stable diffusion excel pipeline i'm gonna use the model from here so let's just copy this model uh, repository name which is segmind ssd one b so i'm just gonna pass this here inside a code double quotes now we are going to use this model so let's use torch d type let's define the data type for the torch tensors so torch d type i'm gonna as, as we said we're gonna use float 16 so torch dot float 16 that's what i'm gonna use here now let's use safe tensors equals to true because we have already installed safe tensors and that's a that's a good way of you know doing it. it's a recommended way of nowadays to deal with this model weight so huge safe tensors let's call it true and after that we're gonna have a variant which variant we're using so we're using floating point 16 so let's use fv16 uh i think that's what we need at least in this let's try running and see if it loads the oh, okay it says two, 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 two uh i hope first let me just get this i i don't know if i made any mistake in the typo but i hope so not there's something wrong it says torch d type okay so torch d type torch dot float 16 i don't know what's the problem here hmm. stable diffusion pipeline in it got an unexpected keyword argument torch underscore d type hmm true stable diffusion x ah uh, okay uh it's not excel pipeline it's from from pre-train that's what we are missing so from pre-train that's a very very pathetic mistake dot from pre-train and now it should load yeah so it's now loading all the model weights the config the uh the the, the tok the tokenizers etc etc right you can see the uh it has been loading now let's Let's pipe it to CUDA. So I'm gonna do pipe dot two underscore uh, two, and then in it's a function. So CUDA, and if you want to use CPU, you if you want to use CPU, probably this will work on CPU as well. But in that case, you have to make a couple of changes, mainly with the precision, okay? Because you might give an error of half precision that might not be supported on a CPU machine, okay? So you may have to do some work around to run it. Now let's do pipe dot two CUDA. You can see here we are using t4 it says connected to python 3 gcp backend uh anyway let it bind it to uh cuda so it will use the cuda kernels for the inference now what next we're gonna do we're gonna define a prompt here guys so let's do a prompt thingy and in prompt let let's write uh let's come down maybe let's use the same prompt uh, that has been used here okay so which prompt they have used an astronaut is and astronaut to this is what and then i'm also going to use here a negative prompt so negative prompt is something 
that you don't want to include you know those features in your generation task okay you probably will avoid those features like so here let's write you know for example ugly you know blurry uh, like poor quality something like this okay now this becomes my prompt and the negative prompting the prompt is something that will that i will feed it to a diffusion model a negative prompt is something that I'm instructing the model to uh, ignore all of these features. You know, they don't have to generate poor quality images or something like that. Okay. Now, let's have a variable called image. And in this image, I'm going to use the pipe variable that we have. Here, I'm going to pass prompt equals prompt. And then I'm going to pass negative prompt equals negative prompt. So let's do Nick, excuse me, negative prompt. And that's it then images and the first one uh let's do the first one so let me see image equals pipe prompt equals prompt i hope this works Ooh. image and you can see the at, it starts with the 50 steps as you would traditionally if you have worked with the stable diffusion stable diffusion model and you can see it over here so it takes around uh when you run for the first time probably you know, it takes around 25 30 seconds uh, to generate an image okay now let's use the display image as well so we are using ipython here in the notebook you can use it so display image this will display the generated image so let's let's see that okay once it gets completed now you can see it it now it's completed took around 30 seconds or something no 35 seconds or something and let's generate now once you do display image it will generate the image for you that you can see it over here in the uh notebook itself uh, okay i don't know why it's taking a bit, bit of time it's it's 124 cross 124 image and you can see it over <laughs> you can see the image over here uh, let me just do a save image and i'll download it in my downloads folder and i'll just open this by the way it looks really uh, funny to me you know being more creativeness and you can see this is the image. I'm, the quality is great, by the way. You know, the creative nature of the diffusion models, by the way. And you can look at the image that we have generated. What the prompt that we have? An astronaut riding a green horse. <laughs> riding where? You know, it's riding in the sky, by the way. <laughs> uh, this is this is funny, but you got the point, right? So here you just load uh, the pipe using from pre-train, pass it, use the floating point 16, the half precision and then you use uh you are using a CUDA kernel to inference this and then you just pass the prompt here within the pipe both the prompt negative prompt and then we get it this is image now what we also have done here you know on, this is my run pod uh gpu instance you know, i use it for some uh trial and all so you can look at here uh this is the same piece of code here we have created a gradio application guys let me so just do pip install gradio once you do the pip install gradio you just use let me give you a walkthrough let me make it bigger control plus all right let me make it we don't know why it's okay now if you look at over here right what we are doing uh let me whoo okay so we are importing gradio and this piece of code remains same this piece of code remains same from the notebook or the hugging face now here we just created a function that looks at the prompt and the negative prompt this function has been created because we have to use a function within a gradio application right it's a callable function that we can call it from gradio interface now in if we are just using prompt and negative prompt if you see what we are doing in the prompt we have a text input and this is nothing but this text input you can see this is a text input that we have and then we have a negative prompt text input which is this one which is for negative prompt if you remove this, you will have a label inside that, you know, uh, a hovering label. And then we are creating an iFace interface variable for Gradio. And inside that, we are defining our function. So we do fn. That's how we define function in Gradio. Not the only way. There are other ways. But this is the recommended way of doing it according to their documentation. So this function is where we use this generate image function. You can see it over here. And then we are saying okay you use inputs and input can inputs can be the list a python list where you can pass multiple inputs text boxes image etc etc now we are passing two inputs here prompt and the negative prompt and then we have an output we'll call it image and you can see it over here that's what image is this part is the image okay now if you look at the title we are giving a title here there's a title we have text to image generation 
and then we have a couple of examples by default. If you come down, you'll see a couple of examples. This is the example. If you, if you don't know uh, how to, which kind of prompt you can use. So basically, you know, you can have a couple of prompts example. You can have a couple of negative prompt example. And that's what we are doing over there. And then we are having allow flagging false. You can also do a flagging option where you are we are trying to create some logs. You know, you can flag those and you can later uh, have a look at those logs as well. And then we're just doing iface.launch. If you are not doing share equals to true, it will run on the local host, which is like running local URLs. When I do share equals to true, you will get a gradual live link for 72 hours if it's keep on running. Okay. Now you can see it over here. It's running on this uh, live link. Okay. So when you just do and hit and enter or something, you know, this will get appear over here. You can see this it has appeared here. Let's see, you know, if we can uh, use an enter prompt like uh, cute cat, uh, big ear uh, uh, looking straight str okay and enter your negative prompt we can write poor quality blurry uh, ugly something like this okay and once you click submit you can see it starts generating the image over here it takes around the same time right around whatever 20 30 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever, depend, depending on the prompts, the negative prompt and how it how it generates it. Now, so on run pod, I am using a basic GPU. It's not the A100 or something. It is just the basic GPU that we are using. And you can see that we got an image, you know, the big ear looking straight, you know, a cute cat uh, that, that you see it over here. Okay, this is this is fantastic guys right and it's and that's why you don't have to pay for mid journey or the dali 3 api etc you, know, you can just deploy it somewhere you have to look at the uh, uh both the financials on the gpu cost and everything but you can again manage it right uh in in that scenario let's try something else as well quickly uh beautiful uh beautiful french or spanish uh spanish girl uh spanish girl looking straight to the camera okay and we can write poor quality uh okay let's write poor quality you know ugly blurry only face or something like this okay now once you again do a uh, submit, uh, it's, it's, it's looks, start creating uh, the image for you. Okay. Now let's see how much time it takes. This is the last iteration. I will say with the prompts that we are doing guys and the code will be available. I will also give you this uh, gradu application code. If you want to try it out locally, or if you have a GPU machine locally, or you want to do it on the cloud as well, just for some, you know, just if you want to play around this model. I'll give the link uh, in the description, the GitHub repository, and you can see. Let me just save this. You know, I'm just gonna download it here. I'll use this probably as my thumbnail. You know, uh, for this video. Okay, you can see the image that we have got over here. Fantastic, right? And this is what I wanted to show you. You can see how quick it is. It took around 20, 25 seconds on a basic GPU. I feel which is okay. That's what Mid Journey also does, right? When it creates four images, it takes a bit of time. So you can use it, you can look at the quality over here, which is fantastic. You can try with some other prompts. Let me know your findings in the comment box. You know, if you get some uh, findings that is really helpful for the community, please come uh, drop your comment in the comment box. So that's what I wanted to create in this quick video with stable diffusion, uh, fast stable diffusion inference, faster, you know, 60% more fast than, uh, more faster than uh, stable diffusion Excel, the base Excel model. I hope you like the video guys. Uh, if you like the video or like the content that I create, please support the channel by subscribing it or liking the video. Please share the video and channel with your friends and to peer. If you have any comment, thoughts, feedbacks, please let me know. Reach out to me through my social media channels. You can find it on the YouTube banner and the channel about us. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.